Oh man, she did what? Why is the government always lying? That's not your fault. That was your mother's job. I know it's up. It's hard, but it's fair. If we don't get our heads out of our collective asses, we're going to be lost in the sauce. You knew he was sorry when you met him at VHS. Come on, baby girl. What's the solution? Look, I know I'm fucked up. This is a man's world. Nothing. We got a woman in the Tell him, James. Oh, snap. They said this is a man's world. What up, Corey? What up, Trevor? What up, Mike? I see you, baby. This is a man's world. Anyways, that's what I was told. That's what I was always told, that this is a man's world. First and foremost, hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Angry Nerd Podcast. My name is Arshan, a.k.a. The Angry Nerd. Um, I want to give shout outs to my man Dylan Brackley over at Savage Hippie for the graphics that you guys can't see right now. Later on, if you check this video out on YouTube, you will see the graphics, and those graphics were done by Dylan Brackley at Savage Hippie. Uh, if you have any graphic needs, holler at my dude. Also, my intro song is um, produced by DJ Platinum Wax over at Young Black Wise Guys Records out of Southern Arkansas. Uh, tonight's topic um, is titled, This is a Man's World, or is it? Because I've often been told that this is a man's world, and I've always been told about the struggles that women have. And I get that. In the 60s, you know what I mean? The 70s, the 80s, nah, maybe even a little bit of the 90s. I kind of, I, I can kind of get behind that. But in recent years, I think that we're seeing a um, the par uh, a, sh a paradigm shift. I don't, I don't think that societal norms are what they once were. Um, the old adage is, "This is a man's world," but I beg to differ. I think that as men, I think we are one of the most underrepresented social groups that there are. Now, this is aside from, I'm talking about your common everyday man. I'm not talking about the power elites, senators, and people in the higher echelon of society. These are the people I'm talking about. I'm talking about your regular everyday Joes. These guys, I think we are underrepresented. We, we are easy victims. It's, it's easy to victimize a guy uh, because the the unspoken is, oh, man, you all right. You can handle it. But if a woman found herself in that very same position, we would in unison say, oh, <laughs> and people will say, Arshan, you're wrong. Arshan, you're wrong. But no, if you look at it objectively, really think about it. Um, as I do, my shtick is to put my personal business out there. I have been in a situation where a young lady that I was dealing with who will remain nameless decided to act unbecomingly at my residence. Um, in, in hood terms, uh, this chick was acting a fool in my house. Uh, so I called the cops. Let me tell you something. Men, we beat each other up about stuff like that because my social circle, my buddies were like, oh man, you weak. Oh, you called the cops on a girl? Yeah, I called the cops on her because that's my only defense. Now, if this was a guy over here acting a fool in my house, bing, bing, hit him with the one-two, and, you know, and we'll let the chips fall where they may, and I'm okay with that. 
I don't really have that option when it comes to dealing with a woman. So I called the cops on her. The cop comes to my house. Now, mind you, this young lady brutalized my, my place of, uh, <laughs> well, thanks, Trevor. Mind you, this lady brutalized my residence uh, by, ki uh, by kicking in the door, um, pulled on me, injected on me, and all this kind of stuff. And I, I was like a helpless little old lady. I'm like, I, I got to call the cops. I got to get this girl off of me. And um, because I don't want to get into a physical altercation because I know all too well that when the cops come out and there was a physical altercation between a man and a woman, wave, wave, wave goodbye to your daddy, kids, because he is going to jail. And you have to talk your way out of the back seat of the squad car. I called the cops in this situation. The cop comes out, he comes to my house, he takes down the report. And um, he pulls me to the side and whispers to me. He says, hey, bro, you really think she gonna do something to you, man? I mean, is this really necessary? I was flabbergasted. Here this is, an officer of the law asking me, "Am I? do I really believe that she's gonna do something to me? And I simply said to her, just because I'm, I'm I'm a little bit slow, I said, sir, if the roles were reversed and I was at her house and I had brutalized her place of residence and I was pulling on her and being physical with her, would you have asked her that question? No, you would have bumped my head on the door as you stuffed me into the back seat of your squad car and you would have took my funky behind off to jail. No questions asked, do not pass go, do not collect $200. And I'd be looking for bond money. That's what would happen. Only thing that I want from you, officer, is the same thing that you would do if the roles were reversed. I'm not saying that I want this young lady to go to jail, but I do want her to be treated as someone who has come over to my place of residence and broken the law and, 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 and demonstrated these crimes on me. I want you to treat her that way. And um, of course he didn't. You know, he just said, you, you go on home. You know what I mean? You just go and get out of here and cool off, calm down. That kind of situation. So I called a friend girl of mine who works downtown. And I was like, what do I do? I, you know, because I'm like, what if she comes over here again? And what if she's on some thin line between love and hate jive? And she decides to beat herself up and then say, I did it. And she gave me, uh, she put me on the path to protect myself. She's like, Arshan, I'm just going to be straight up with you. You are not going to get a protective order against this girl. The judge just ain't going to give you one. Not enough has been done. Uh, I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Uh, when women go down there, they automatically protect them and the kids and everything like that. It does not work the same way for men. So I went down there and I got an, uh, an emergency protective order, which is like for 30 days. And then you go to court and then uh, the judge will see if there's enough evidence to grant you a full on protective or uh, restraining order. And of course, that didn't happen. The judge didn't see uh, fit to do all that. But. What I did have in my favor was that I had documentation that I had taken steps to protect myself against this young lady. And I was instructed to keep a copy on my person, keep one in uh, my vehicles and one in my home. Um, and that was the only thing that I could do. I was actually at her mercy, you know, whether or not she decided to come act a fool again. Excuse me. So I say men, common men, I always exclude these um, these guys who are in, um, in power, like senators and things like that. Regular everyday guys, we just don't get the same fair shape uh, so socially as, as women do. Uh, when the cops come out, we are automatically uh, the defendant. That's just how it works. Um, and people don't really want to take a look at that. Uh, but these are the same women who will talk about equality. And let me tell you something. In recent years, this, the scales have uh, supremely been tipped. They have, uh, they've really been tipped in the, uh, in the favor of women. And that's not to say that I don't think women should be protected. That's not to say that I don't think women should have a say or, you know what I mean, anything like that. What I'm saying is we have been left out in the dark. We are flapping in the wind. Regular, everyday Joes. We're flapping in the wind. Another thing, men are still held to the old standards of, of living. You know what Pawpaw did? You know, Pawpaw worked a job at the railroad and he built a house with his bare hands, you know, and he went out and killed deer and fed the whole family while mom stayed home with the kids. There are a lot of women who expect 
those dynamics in the family. And I'm like, uh, sweetheart, have you seen like the what the real estate market looks like now? It is very different from when grandpa was coming up. You know what I mean? Like both parents have to work. Um, and if you say, hey, we need to go half on bills and we need to go half on this and half on that, do you know you will be shamed? You will be shamed. You're not a man. You're a sorry man. I've seen the uh, memes on Facebook. I've seen the posts. Oh, if he wants to go half, girl, that ain't the one for you. Look at the numbers. It's not the same market out there that it was in the 60s. But we are still held to that standard. And here's the kicker. The women today get to be liberated because I'm not grandma. I'm not washing dishes. I'm not going to, my place ain't in the kitchen. I can go out in the workplace. So wait a minute, you get to work and spend your money on Amazon things. And I have to work and spend my money on the bills because the long and the short of it is that's how it rolls. Whether people like to admit it or not, there is a gross double standard right now in society in favor of our better halves. And if you have not been blessed to have a woman who has morality and who has your back and who is willing to go meet you halfway, man, I feel for you, dude. I've been lucky and I've been blessed, so I don't all the way 100% have that uh, situation happening for me, but I see enough of my friends going through it. And I'm like, we get held to the standard of the men of antiquity while women today get to be Renaissance women. They get to be modern women and they want an old fashioned man. That's not fair. Another thing, men, are, we are held, I mean, grossly accountable. How many times have we heard this said, family? He got my baby pregnant. <laughs> he got my baby pregnant. Wait a minute, baby. It takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. You can't sit up there and say, that man got your baby pregnant. We don't know what where your baby was at in the equation. Your bottom top, I ain't gonna talk about how that conversation went in my personal life. <laughs> yes, I am. I, I was, that was said to me. You got my baby pregnant. You got my baby pregnant. And I said, your baby was on top. Your baby got me pregnant. <laughs> and everybody turned and looked at me like, you know, I was as foolish as I am. Because I said, wait a minute, you guys aren't gonna put this off on me and, and chide me and I got your baby pregnant, no. Your baby came over there and she had a part in that too. Oftentimes we see this with teenagers. Uh, the young man, we forget that he's a kid too. The young man's a kid too, just like the young lady is. But the uh, responsibility is put on the young man's shoulders. Time to step it up, man. Time to step it up. Step up to the plate, be a man. I have yet to hear not saying that there aren't any for all those people who think in stereo, not saying that there aren't any mothers who will say, it's time for you to be a woman, put your big girl draws on. But I have yet to hear that. I, <laughs> you like that, huh, Thomas? I have yet to hear a mother tell her daughter, hey, it's time to woman up now. It's time to be about your business. Oh, but many times I've heard women say, we gonna get this joker. Oh, we going to get him, baby. Don't worry about it, Peaches. We going to get him. Oh, yeah, I've heard that plenty of times. We going to seek out and we going to destroy this young man because he shouldn't have got you pregnant if he wasn't ready to be a father. Wait a minute. Maybe she should have practiced some safe sex if she wasn't ready to be a mother. There was a comedian. I can't remember. I like to give credits to people when I cite their uh, uh, jokes. But he said, he's, hey, when a guy can't take care of the baby, he gets put on child support. The girl can't put, get, take care of the baby. She gets Section 8, HUD, T, TANF, food stamps, whatever they call that stuff nowadays. I know the names have changed over the years. EBT, Eat Better Today. She gets all of that. What does the young man get? He gets a jail cell if he isn't careful. If he isn't able to take care of his business, he gets put in jail. Women have political and social representation. Because when a woman runs for office, you better believe she's running on the shoulders of womanhood. Yeah, she's got a following. They're gonna vote, they're gonna vote for her on the strength of her being a woman. And so she's got that, she's got that market cornered already. Social representation, all you have to do is look on YouTube, look on Facebook. They've done the social experiments. They've so showed the guy 
being rough with a young lady and people come from far and wide to come to the man's re to the lady's rescue. Same couple. The woman is being overtly abusive to the man. And people were laughing at him. A lot like the cop was kind of halfway laughing, smiling at me for calling the cops on the young lady who was treating me unfairly, who was treating me abusively. So when I do the, the, uh, the American citizen thing and when someone's breaking the law against me, I call the cops and the cop comes out and gets a kick out of it because the perp is a woman. So if I do anything against a woman, I'm doubly punished. If a woman trespasses against me and I call the authorities, then I'm um, a lot of unsavory words. I'm um, practicing, like Brother Baines and Malcolm X said, finding the words to say what is on my mind. So I'm not using expletives. I hope that pleases some of my listeners that I've um, chosen to evoke uh, more tasteful English than I have previously used. But getting back to my point, women have all of the eggs in their basket. They have all the choices. You think I'm lying? What do you guys think? Let me see in the comments. Women choose when we have sex. If you're laying in the bed, you had a hard day at work, and she come over and she wants a piece, no is not in the equation. Has anybody been um, forcefully coerced into coming off of that? Usually we kind of go with it, even if we don't feel like it, and we don't feel like she's taking advantage of us. Um, because we've been socialized that way. Who's going to turn down this lady offering you her creamy goodness? Nobody. No man. But what if I want to? Do you know what will happen when she tells her homegirls, he wasn't trying to come off the draws? They're going to roast me. They're going to roast me. Flip the roles. She's had a hard day of work. She's laying in the bed. And I get in the bed. Hey, baby, time to tear off a little something, something. If I press the issue, I go to jail. Now, I think I'm noticing a pattern. Are you guys seeing a pattern? When you do things against women that they don't like, you go to jail. If they do something against you that you don't like, you're a laughing stock. They say it's a man's world, but I think I'm painting a pretty good picture that that might be a dated um, idiom. I don't think that it's a man's world anymore, guys. Especially, I, I don't want, I don't all the way want to bring up the whole Me Too movement just because the women who have been wronged and the women who have been taken advantage of in that way, I, I think that it that's a very important movement. But I think that their movement has gotten bastardized by so many uh, money grabs. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I had a drink with Bill Cosby too. You know, hey, I was on the casting couch with Harvey Weinstein. Where I'm writing the book. Come check it out. You know, those people have kind of tainted the whole Me Too movement. First, <laughs> one's in the chat if you see the pattern. That's right, Trevor. Let's put a one up in the chat if, you starting, if you're starting to see the pattern. Um, women choose when we have babies. If I'm not ready to be a father, and I suggest to, I'm, this isn't a conversation about pro-abortion or anti-abortion, saying, for instance, if I'm not ready to be a father, and I say, hey, you need to have a, you know, smushmortion. You need to do that. You need to get rid of it. If I'm that kind of dude. It's her choice. It is her choice. I don't get a say in the matter. It's her body. That's what the feminists will come and say. It's her body. You're a bastard. You want her to carry your baby. You want her, or the, and, and if you want her to get rid of it, then the feminists will come and say, you want her to kill a baby. These are the same women who will say it's her choice. And they will use that double standard and they will flip it on you. They'll use it whatever, whatever side of the coin that they need to fit their, to meet their needs. They will use whatever is at their disposal. If you're trying to get her to have an abortion, they'll say, you're a monster. You want her to kill a baby. She wants to have the baby. I mean, if she doesn't want to have the baby and you want to have the baby, screw you, pal. It's her body. You can't make her carry that baby. It's her choice. Is that, that's wrong. 
It's wrong for me not to have a say in that. That was my seed. I want my seed back. I don't want you to be the mother. There are a lot of guys who are living in hell right now because they had a baby by a girl they knew that they didn't want to have a baby with. You know, she had a fat booty. They were dancing at the club. He knew he wanted to go, you know, to the next level, but he didn't want to keep the lady. And one thing led to another. Here's a baby. All right, well, let's take care of it. No, I'm keeping my baby. And then they turn around and make this guy's life hell. Have you ever gone to family court? If you don't, if you haven't been in any of these situations with child support or uh, or or assault and battery or any kind of situation like that with a woman, just go down one day when you're bored and you ain't doing nothing and go to family court. Sit in family court and watch how man after man after man is destroyed. Watch how they give him pennies to live on. Watch how a guy will get his entire way of life ruined by this, by this woman because that's what they have done. They have weaponized the institution of womanhood. The powers that be have weaponized the institution of womanhood. And it's no big deal when you're somebody who has means, but 95% of the population doesn't have money like that. When you're talking about the upper echelon, the top 5%, top 10% even, those people like have the money, they have the money to split half and pay $1,000 a month for child support. They have it. The average guy doesn't. The average guy doesn't have money like that. And if you're an average guy who has a baby by a woman who puts you in the system, my prayers to you, man, because they are about to destroy you. They are about to destroy you. And nobody is speaking about it. Nobody's saying anything about it. People have just accepted it. Uh, a personal friend of mine, I watched him get his check, and after child support was done, he had a check for 13 cents. I saw that with my own two eyes, and I'm a grown man, and I don't mind sharing with you. I shed a tear because I'm like, he did other things on the side that aren't quite legal to make money, and I and I asked him one day, um, at your age, why are you still doing these things in the streets, man? Like, You're like 46. Why are you still doing that? You know what I mean? Like, why don't you get, I call myself trying to reach out to him and grab a brother out of the streets, you know, and be a positive influence. And I'm like, why are you doing that? You know what I mean? Like, you're a grown man. Like, you're, you'll are you be 50 in a few years, dude. Why are you still in the streets? And when he showed me that check stub, and he was like, this is what I, what I made last week. And I was looking because I'm I'm trying to find, like, I'm like, okay, where's your, where's your actual pay? Where's what you actually made? 13 cents. And, you know, it was like, okay, Arshan, mind your business. Shut your mouth. What do you expect this guy to do when they take his entire check saved for 13 cents? There are a lot of guys out there who are hustling and doing crimes just to live because some lady the, the uh, and the courts ruined his life. They couldn't come to some other kind of understanding. Also, women dictate relationships. Do you know that if a young lady gets it in her head that y'all are in a relationship, that you're in a relationship? It doesn't work like that on the other way. When you reverse that, you are a stalker. You're a stalker and <laughs> you are probably going to wind up in jail. Why is it all roads lead to jail? That's what happens, man. And... It's this wicked country. This It's this wicked country. I'm not the government. Let me say that. That's a better thing because the country is made up of the people. And I don't believe that this country is made up of wicked people. But I do believe that our government is made up of a good majority of wicked people. And they will use, they will weaponize anything. They have, the government has weaponized families, relationships, marriages. Don't worry about it. We will destroy him. Everything they did that the government does is to keep common people down. That's who you see getting destroyed in those courtrooms. People with money don't care. Okay, she can have the house in Louisiana, whatever. You know what I mean? They got money and homes and land and property. They don't care. Oh, whatever. Get out of my life. I got a new wife anyway. You know, 
but for common everyday working working guys your life will be destroyed dealing with it if you run afoul of a woman I think the good book says there's a hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. That might be Martin Scorsese. That might not have been in. Is that in the Bible? I'm going to have to fact check that. That might not be in the Bible. <laughs> hell has no fury like the woman, like that of a woman scorned. That might have been. What you say about the Freemason? Uh, that, I don't know. No, no, I didn't say anything about the Freemasons. Or, um, OSHA. I'm just saying that the people in this, the the powers that be, uh, the government, they weaponize everything in our in our life. They weaponize your kids. Your kids can get emancipated. Uh, your wife will divorce you, put you in jail, take your money, put you on child support. Don't have enough money to be poor. You know, just that enough money. Like I'm in that tax bracket to where I got enough money to not be poor, but not enough to really, you know what I mean? Like ball out, so to speak. If my wife decided to leave me and went for spousal support and child support, I'd be screwed up. I would be out of here. I mean, I would be down there on 13th Street trying to turn a trick myself to, to make a buck. Because, and a lot of guys are in bad situations because of this. Like I said, we have zero representation. The common man, I'm not talking, if, when they think talk about men, the most of the men that I know don't wear suits and go down to uh, the excuse me, state capital and make decisions and whatnot. Most of the men that I know wear flannels. Most of the men that I know wear some type of uniform. They work for UPS or they work for the lumber yard. Most of the men that I know are working men. And if a wicked woman decided to ruin his life, this government has made it so that she can. What do you guys think? You don't have to get all personal like I do. But I really do. I, I really am curious to see what you guys think and what kind of experiences you guys have had. Um, and you can always use the uh, the anonymous. <laughs> you can always go about it anonymously and I won't put you out there. But I know in my personal life, I thank God because my ex-wife, she has all the ingredients to fuck me. Excuse me. Screw me around. I'm going to bleep that part out. She she has like all the ingredients. She really could screw me over. You know, but somehow or another, the Most High has saw fit to put some type of friendship in our uh, in our relationship with our co-parenting. And I have been blessed, but I have I know so many brothers out there who are struggling right now because regular everyday men are not represented in this country. The only interests that are represented are the the power elite, the everyday working man. Our interests aren't being represented up there. I saw some guys talking about Trump and I don't really get off into the whole Trump argument, whether I'm for Trump, against Trump. I honestly think I'm too poor for politics to really concern me. <laughs> That's like my biggest thing. So I don't really care. Democrat, Republican, it really doesn't matter to me. You know what I mean? I'm like not so poor that I'm in like in a homeless shelter, but I don't have enough money to be, like make no noise. So, but when I see guys that I work with Oh, Trump, man, he's a hell of a guy, boy. That old Trump, you know? And I'm like, listen, man, if you wear overalls and flannels, if you wear work boots every day, that man ain't going to give a doggone about you. He is about people with paper. He is about people of, of means. I, and I don't necessarily think that, uh, that he's a racist or anything like that. I think he's an elitist. And I think when you're an elitist, I don't think color matters. I think it's about money at that point. Um, but I do believe that the powers that be do not care about the common everyday man. And they use our women and our children to keep us down. It's like the crabs in the barrel kind of situation. We can't get up out of the barrel. I know tons of guys who have great minds, great ideas. But after working 12 hours a day, how does he ever have time to bring those to fruition? Those great ideas. I, I don't, I don't understand it. And then I think about it. If we ever decided to band together common men, like they're doing up there in Michigan right now, not saying that I condone or not saying that I'm demonizing those guys, but those guys are banding together and they like, well, we ain't taking no shut in, buddy. 
nope, we ain't gonna do it, taking our streets back. You know, <laughs> they bearing up arms and they take it to the streets. You know what I'm saying? But if the common man, if we did that in this country in mass, oh, look out, buddy. Look out, buddy. Because all it takes is enough men to say, we do not need you stuffy old dudes up here in suits making decisions for us. Your, look at your hands. Your hands ain't never touched a shovel. Your hands ain't never uh, touched a forklift. You've never had to work hard. So why are you making decisions for hardworking men? I'll tell you why. They make decisions. They make policies. They pass laws to keep us under our women's thumbs. They have totally shifted the family dynamics. Now, mom wears the pants. Oh, yeah, buddy. Mom wears the pants. Let dad get wrong if he wants to. When I was growing up, I'm glad that I'm old enough to remember when my dad spoke. That was it. That was it, 100%. And, you know, and people would say, he was a caveman. You know, that's that's a dictator. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm okay with that. We had enough to eat. Our bills were paid. We had some of the extras in life. The way dad ran things, things ran smoothly. And people will shame you because you have some of those old-fashioned beliefs. I'm not necessarily saying that I believe, hey, a woman's supposed to be in the in the kitchen and you ought to be able to whoop her with a, a stick no bigger than your thumb. You know, <laughs> I don't think like that. But I do think that there are roles in the family unit that have to be taken, that have to be played. And they have gone and they have shifted the societal paradigm so much Nobody knows what their role is anymore. No one knows what they're supposed to do anymore. The kids are running around crazy as all get out. Oh man, these kids and some of the conversations, I'm flabbergasted. I do wish, miss the days where a guy, uh, if a kid got sassy with a parent, you can knock them up under the, you can't do that anymore. The kids can put you in jail. The wife can put you in jail for nothing. Now on the flip side, if I called the cops on them, they be like, come on, buddy. You can't run your household, man. What's wrong with you? I just put my foot down. That's the way I do it. And that's what the cop will tell you when he comes out. And it's bull crap. It's bull crap. I really feel like uh, men have been pigeonholed into this uh, docile, effeminate uh, corner to where you really, there is, I feel like there is an assault on the institution of manhood. There's an assault on the institution of manhood. The alpha male, the real men, are, be, are, are being referred to by a term that is horrible called toxic masculinity. A coined by, uh, excuse me, a phrase, by the way, coined by two homosexual men. I see problems with that already. I don't have no problems with the LGBTQs or whatever their people's names are. I don't have no problems with them. But I do have a problem with you thinking that you can define me. I'm not telling you about what to do with the bananas and the gerbils and stuff. So you don't tell me what to do when it comes to shovels and hammers and nails and stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's the way I feel about it. You know, I, you do fingernail polish and I do, yeah, I buff cars and stuff like that. And it's cool. You know, and we can leave it like that. You know, I hate the term toxic masculinity because I feel like there's no way for masculinity to be toxic. I'm not, like I've, I've told my son this, I'm, I, I'm not going to teach you how to be a boy. You come out your mother's womb knowing how to be a boy. My job is to teach you how to become a man. Oh, but it becomes so much more difficult to do that when you got folks throwing around. That's top. That's the worst word of the past five years. Toxic. Here's a, here's a phrase that I'm going to coin right here on the Angry Nerd podcast. Toxic sensitivity. How about that? I think there is a mother load of toxic sensitivity going on in this country right now. And I think that that's why we're being affected like we are. Gerbils and hamsters. I don't know, man. I, look, man. I, stuff pops up when you're on Pornhub. But anyways, <laughs> anyways, I think that we have to reclaim masculinity. And it takes us banding together. And it takes us being on platforms like this, having the conversations. Because we can say it's a man's world, but if we get right down to it, it's a rich man's world and a woman's world. That's whose world it is. And we're caught in between them. 
hot girl summer, hot girl man. I wish that, the, that that I wish that I could just destroy their masters, and we never hear that song again because they are destroying the fabric of womanhood. And it's people like that, and it's lyrics like that that have these girls out here going stone crazy. So you guys tell me what you think in the comments. You guys like, share, and comment. I want you guys to um, tune in. I'm going to go live on Wednesdays at 8. And on Saturdays at noon, I'll, I'll, be, I'll upload on Saturdays by noon. Uh, coming up this Saturday, I'm, I'm looking to do something different. I'm going to be interviewing somebody. And I think it's going to be a really hot topic. And I'm going to have a special guest on. And I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, follow me on um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, The Angry Nerd Podcast. Uh, you, my YouTube channel, The Angry Nerd Podcast on YouTube. You guys uh, tell a friend. And listen, guys, we got to stick together. If you got a homeboy out there that you know is going through it, if nothing else, just call him and be an ear to listen. Let's put our heads together, think of some ideas. We need to get back to forming clubs, forming car clubs. Um, there's some of us, I, I have connections with uh, martial arts. Uh, find other things that we do and we need to band together. We need to start coming together and we need to start getting some people like ourselves, hardworking man, excuse me, hardworking men in politics, pushing our agenda, making things happen for us because right now things are not happening to us and we don't live in a victim, well, in, in, a, in a state of victimhood. So we'll never talk about how we've been victimized, but let me tell you something. This government, this country, the cops, society at large has victimized the common man. We have been victimized and we need and we need to not stand for it any longer. We need to not go for it. If you have a brother, a cousin, an uncle, a dad, reach out to them. Let's form these bonds. Let's get back into these. Let's get back into forming these clubs. These uh, not the He-Man Woman Haters Club, <laughs> but you know, because we still need women. Say so it's a it's a man's world. That's what they said. And I'm gonna leave y'all with the uh, with Mr. Uh, James Brown. But it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. All right, I'm out. Love you guys. Peace.